So, this is the house that's not selling. Words fail me. There's quite a lot of clutter. It's not clutter. It's art. Right, burn it. Where is your bedroom? Oh, no, you're joking. <laughs> it's the main reason this house is unsellable. I don't know what we're going to do. Selling a property can be a real challenge, even in a seller's market. The thing is, it's not just price that dictates a sale anymore. Location, curb appeal, decor, all play a major part in how quick a property moves. But if you market your property correctly, you can increase the sale price by as much as 30%. It's all about what you, the homeowner, will do to make that sale. And in my real estate experience, I know that buyers want it all and the competition is fierce. Frank and Amy's two-bedroom bungalow has been on the market for two months, which is a lifetime in this city's fast-moving market. They can't really understand why the house they've lived in for the past seven years hasn't received a single offer. The listing price at $319,000 is reasonable, but to pile on the pressure, they have to move because they've just bought a bigger house down the road. Okay, guys, dinner. We don't really want to leave because we have a lot of memories here. Are you eating your veggies, sweetie? <laughs> we built a family in this house. Unfortunately, we've run out of room. We want somebody to move in and have great memories like we've had. We've been scratching our heads trying to figure out exactly why this house isn't selling. I don't know what we're going to do. A potential buyer has to be able to walk into a house that's up for sale and really imagine themselves living there. Frank and Amy's emotional attachment to this home is just one of the reasons it's unsellable. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you, Sophie. Hi, Amy. Nice Hi. to meet I'm you. Frank. Hi. Welcome. So, this is the house that's not selling. Yeah, this is it. OK, but that's why we're here. Sounds All right, good. Yeah. <laughs> OK. So, tell me about this room. Well, this is the living room. Right. It's where we hang out and do all our family things. I don't think you're making the most of it. It's a good-sized room. I mean, this house has a great footprint. It's not small. But do you see how all the furniture juts into the room? So instead of feeling that you're in a big sitting room, you feel almost like you're in a kind of passageway. We want a wow factor so someone comes in and goes, wow, what a great sitting room. Do you sense that? I think it's cosy. I like it. It's definitely cosy. For instance, there's quite a lot of clutter. My son made that. <laughs> I, really, I didn't think you'd made it. Um, it's lovely, but now is not the time to be sentimental. We're trying to make this into a neutral space, which buyers will want to walk into and think, this is the place for me. Two bedrooms off the living room is quite common in bungalows of this size. First one, obviously the kids. Not such a bad size, but you really can't tell because of this crazy mess. So they have bunk beds. They do take up less space than two twins, but the stuffed closet, clothes and toys all over the place makes this room seem tiny, and it highlights the lack of storage. Not a message you want to send to potential buyers. So whose room is this? This is my son's room. So if your son sleeps here and your daughter sleep there, where does that leave you? Well, it puts us in the basement. Right, OK. Now, that is going to be a major problem for potential buyers, the fact that the master bedroom is in the basement. I think it's one of the main reasons that this house is unsellable at the moment. Really? Yeah, really. Wow, look at their reaction. I don't think they realise that with no master bedroom on the main floor, this would be a big problem for people who want to buy. Right, let's go to the basement to get a complete picture. This is our basement. OK, now, where, where is the bed? The bed? Oh, no, you're joking. <laughs> Words fail me. You both work really hard and you've got three kids and you sleep on a futon that most students wouldn't sleep on. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty pathetic. Yeah. I would we I could weep. From a serious point of view, for potential buyers, this is a really big turnoff because they're coming into this house and they're thinking, where's the master bedroom? They've got two kids' rooms upstairs and a dive downstairs. The sad thing is you can tell you've done work down here. You've repainted and I like the colour of the walls, it's neutral. But even if we only changed one thing, this would be the thing that has to change. 
because at the moment, this is putting people off massively. It's hard to believe that the one bathroom in the entire house is in the basement, which could be a turn-off for potential buyers. Thank heavens at least it's in good shape because they've just renoed it. It's definitely a plus because a fresh new bathroom could increase the selling potential of your house by thousands. I can't believe what I've just seen. I mean, no one's going to go into that house and think to themselves, ooh, I like the one where the couple sleep in the basement on an old futon. I'm just going to have to sit down and discuss this with them because this cannot last. The plus points for the house is great street, fantastic neighbourhood, you know, got open plan living, you finish the basement. Mm -hmm. The main downside is, I'm not going to call it a master bedroom downstairs because that it ain't, but basically you're not really getting your market. Who do you imagine buying this house? Us? No. Yeah, family like us anyways. I think that is one of the reasons it hasn't sold. You should be marketing this house to a young couple or a single person, and they are not going to want a family house. They want a decluttered, depersonalised, neutral space that they can walk into and imagine themselves in. So that's what we've got to aim for, declutter. So no futon? <laughs> no, the futon, I personally would burn it. But, um, I can't say I'll miss it. <laughs> OK, but now you're ready for the change, and that has to be something to do with the fact that in two weeks' time you could be paying two mortgages. Yeah, that's a pretty serious wake-up call. Yeah. If your house has been on the market for two months and you haven't received a single offer, consider why this is happening. When a buyer walks in, think, what are their first impressions and what's turning them off the property? I'm off to meet Amy and Frank's real estate agent to get his perspective on why this house is unsellable. It's all in the family, as Buddy Byers, the realtor, is also Amy's uncle. One of the first questions I had was, did he think Amy was sabotaging the sale of this house? That's a good point, and, and uh, I do feel bad for her. I know how much she loves the house, and you can see it when you look around. It's tough for her to leave this, and I think people coming in don't see it as a prospective purchaser because they see it as Amy's home. Yeah. And maybe subconsciously Amy isn't doing enough to, to let it show yeah. to its best ability. The time of year has certainly taken away from the backyard. They have yeah. a huge lot, 185 feet deep. This kind of weather doesn't allow us to show that to its full potential. You're Amy's uncle. Do you find it's been a bit of a hindrance? Or... It's funny you should say that because there has been some times where I've tried to suggest decluttering mm. and I don't want to push it because she's my niece, but yeah. I'm not sure she was really listening to to the extent she should have. When you're selling a property, think of the area. Who's your target market, i.e. who's going to buy your property? Now, Frank and Amy, they live in a young, hip, trendy area. And that's going to draw in a sort of 20-something crowd. The price is right, but it's those first impressions when you first walk into the property that are really turning people off. Might be time to take Amy and Frank to a comparable house in the neighbourhood to show them the competition. I brought you here because it's a comparable property. It's the same sort of size as yours, a couple of streets down, but I think it shows really well. So I'd like you to go and have a look and give me your thoughts at the end. The kitchen should be one of the key selling features of your house, and though this one is not as large as Amy and Frank's, the light neutral colours and decluttered counters give it a clean, spacious feel, something potential buyers will notice. It's really bright in here, too. Oh, I like the floor. It kind of looks like our bathroom. Oh, this is nice. Depending on the style of your house, the master bedroom could be on the main floor or upstairs, but should never, ever be a futon on the floor in the basement. Here is a good example of where a master bedroom should be. It's kind of plain. Yeah, but roomy. Yeah. No toys. <laughs> What's this room? Oh, it's like a little office. So, what do you think? Overall, it's nice. The reason I brought you to this house is because I think it's a really good example of marketing. They thought to themselves, right, who's going to want to live in a place like this? Well, it's probably going to be a young couple. So they've made the second bedroom into a kind of home office, which is a great selling point. It's just basically putting a bit of thought into who you think is most likely to buy your house. Right, for sure. And in this case, it's been very successful because this house sold in a week. What? Are you serious? Fingers crossed that they'll now be more open-minded about what has to be done to remarket their house. They're going to have to be if they want to get it sold. Though I think this couple are coming around, I need some backup. And I've called in our general contractor, Anthony Sayers. So, Anthony, what were your first thoughts when you came into the house? Run! 
<laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> to me, the house needs some work. The first bedroom, I looked up at the ceiling. Looks like it's gonna fall down at any time. <laughs> right. So, new drywall on the yep. ceiling. The carpet just looked very aged, so new carpet. It's been colored on a few times. <laughs> <laughs> in the second bedroom, the plumbing stack is sticking out. It needs That's to be. It's charming. <laughs> Can you see what I have to deal with? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it is a waste pipe. There is, it's just not character. Yeah, okay. it needs to be boxed in. The kitchen's looking a little tired. Cabinets need some fixing up. Paint job. So, Anthony, what are we doing vis-a-vis -vis extra prep space? Well, by taking the table away and building an island there, you're going to section it off the two spaces. So there's room. a clear dividing line between the living room and the kitchen? Yes. You don't look convinced. No, I'm not totally sold on the island idea. To me, a table is more comfortable. Remember what we've been saying, it's not really about you anymore. I know that sounds brutal, but it's about people coming in and what they're going to want. And a two-person island, it's going to create more space in the kitchen. It's going to be kind of a younger, hipper look. And you think that will help sell the house? I think it will, yes. Because remember our target market, young couples or single people, it's not the big family. Because as we can tell, big families do not fit into this <laughs> house. Okay. Cool. Okay. <laughs> right now the living room appears small and dark. All we need to do is declutter, get rid of that big brown couch and give the walls a fresh coat of a neutral colour paint. This will make a world of difference in how it presents to potential buyers. The basement needs to be reclaimed as a family room. Let's start by dumping that futon. So, what do you think? I don't know about you, but to me it seems like a lot of work. It seems like a lot of work. Actually, it isn't. It's more affordable work that we're going to be doing, and mostly cosmetic. Nothing structural. Correct, Anthony. And the total cost of this reno is $3,500. Practically speaking, it's about the same as 1% of the home's asking price. A solid short-term investment, considering if they don't sell soon, they'll be carrying two mortgages for who knows how long. You know, these are changes we have got to make. You don't want this house remaining unsellable for another two weeks. You're okay? Right. So you're with me on this? I'm with you. <laughs> okay, let's get the overalls on. Okay? Let's do it. I'm starting to really get into the whole, you know, decluttering, and it kind of feels good to get everything rolling now. That's one down, oh, another 20 to go. It's a little sad putting them away, but at the same time, it's a new beginning, so I'm trying to focus on that. Wow, look at that big room. I guess Sophie did know what she was talking about. Oh, yeah. Hey, Anthony, how's it going? Excellent. Cool, what are you up to? Making progress. Drywall in the first bedroom. Carpet yep. in the second bedroom. That pipe boxed in. Yeah, I saw that, it looks amazing. I see the island is still in its infancy, Anthony. Yes. I'm building the island to match the cabinets. Uh -huh. It's going to be movable. I think it's going to be brilliant because it's going to act as a kind of dividing line between the sitting room and the kitchen without spending a huge amount of money. Yeah, it is pretty cheap. Most people don't realize how important the kitchen is. I mean, you can add tens and thousands of dollars just by renovating and having a nice kitchen. Excellent point, Anthony. For example, take a look at this house down the street that's just sold. Now, I wanted you to see a comparable property. Is it to your taste? I think it's beautiful. So, can you imagine your place looking like this? Not really. No. I think we have too many things around. See? By things, do you <laughs> maybe mean clutter? That? <laughs> that is one of the key things that we've been talking about is decluttering and a kind of calm space that anyone can imagine themselves living in. And this is it. Should we go and have a look at the rest of the house? Sounds good. Okay, this is the master bedroom, which does have an ensuite bathroom. Which is oh, I like that. So this room is a bit smaller than your bedroom. Right, it feels bigger. See, it's the pale walls. Light paint helps bounce the light around, increasing the sense of space. And the best thing is, it's not a lot of work. Remember yesterday, you were a bit nervous, yeah. understandably, and thinking, oh God, it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. But in this room, it's just a paint job. Yeah, it makes a huge difference. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. It does make a huge difference. And you can imagine coming in here and just relaxing. Yeah, definitely. It's, again, it's calm, and that is mainly to do with the decluttering. Because this is very simple. 
Should we head on to the kitchen? Sure. Okay. Oh, wow. This is very oh, nice. This is really nice. I like the cupboards a lot. Yeah, it's beautiful. The counter is very nice. I could definitely see myself cooking nice in here. Nice and spacious. But I really brought you to this house to prove a point. And this house does have two bathrooms, and the sitting room and the kitchen are separated. For some people, that's quite important. But your house is a better house, and it's much bigger. And you've got two double bedrooms on the first floor. You've got a bigger sitting room, a bigger kitchen, a bigger yard. But this house sold in five days. That's, that's incredible. I never thought it would be that important yeah. to declutter. With a little bit of work, you can achieve that look in your house, which is going to make it much more sellable. As the design work continues, Amy and Frank are slowly coming round to my side. But like their house, it still needs some work. It doesn't really feel like my house anymore, and that's kind of sad to me. I guess that's the whole point. You know, we're fixing it up for someone else to buy the house and come in and enjoy it. It's a lot of work right now. I'm trying to keep that other house that we saw earlier today in mind and uh, using that as a little motivation. I hope that all this work that we're putting in here is going to pay off in the end. I'm feeling really good about all the work being done on Amy and Frank's house. When I first got here, I was a bit concerned, but I think we might have converted this home from an unsellable into a house a young couple just want to scoop up. There was no wow factor when you walked into Amy and Frank's house. To change that, we started by painting the living room and kitchen a light neutral colour, which immediately brightened it and opened up the space. We replaced that oversized couch with a smaller, inexpensive one that the owners can take to their new home, and rearranged existing furniture, removing visual distractions and allowing buyers to really see the potential in this room. We got rid of that big old kitchen table and replaced it with an affordable island that Anthony built. It clearly divides the kitchen from the living space and no longer feels like a big long hallway, but instead two individual spaces. To highlight the dual function of the second bedroom, we transformed it into an office space that could double as a guest room. By repainting the existing shelving unit and using a chair they stored in the basement, we painted the sun's room a nice light colour, boxed in that delightful waste pipe in the corner and spruced up the existing bed with fresh new linens. Decluttering worked wonders, and with a few family photos to adorn the walls, the results were amazing. This room was transformed into a bright and spacious master bedroom that buyers can easily imagine themselves sleeping soundly in. The basement took the least amount of work and cost almost nothing. All we did was get rid of that hideous futon, converted a cluttered closet into an entertainment area, and rearranged some furniture to give the space new life and create an informal, relaxing space that will definitely attract buyers. Though the dirty work is complete, we've got more to do to get this property sold, so preparing for the open house is the next step. Marketing. Internet virtual tours and professional photos. An experienced photographer is needed to shoot them and get a colour photo for the newspaper. Large colour ads make all the difference in getting people to come to your open house. Do not scrimp on this. Find the busiest intersection near your home to put up your open house signs everywhere. You don't want people getting lost. Pay the $200 to $300 for a home inspection so the buyers don't have to spend the money. They'll like that. The moment of truth has arrived. Potential buyers are coming to see the house, and with any luck, someone will be putting in an offer. It was a lot of hard work, but it paid off. Amy and Frank's house has been transformed in just a few days on a shoestring budget into a house that can clearly hold its own in a competitive market. We're about to put it to the test with an open house. Come in. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Oh, it's nice. Fingers crossed. I love the colour scheme. Just like I thought, a bright neutral colour makes all the difference. So this would be like a study. Or second bedroom. There's enough space in this room to hold a desk and a day bed for guests. This is the master bed? This is the master bedroom, yep. It's a good-sized master that easily fits a queen bed, a dresser, and a night table. The color's nice, the baby blue. Nice-sized kitchen. Perhaps I love the flow. The flow's excellent. Exactly the reaction I was hoping for. This is a savvy buyer that knows what to look for. It's very nice. Nice color, it's very neutral. This is movable, so yeah, like you can have it here or move it along there. It's designed so you can use it as extra counter space, kitchen storage, or an eat-in bar. Oh, here's a room for you. That is so awesome. What did you do with all the space? 
Oh, that's nice. It's amazing how rearranging your furniture to present the room properly really helps to visualize the use of that space. Excellent. Fingers crossed for sale. So now you've had a look around, what do you think? It looks nice and bright and airy and mm -hmm. fresh. I love the kitchen. I love how everything flows. Just wonderful. It's nice up here to sort of relax and entertain and whatnot. The downstairs is perfect for him and for a TV room. I know it's a bit of a cheeky question, but maybe an offer in the pipeline? Very much so. Well, Very that's much what we so. like to hear. Yes. It's a pretty good possibility, actually. He looks like he's at home already. He is. <laughs> it's his call. Hey, Ben, you want to live here? The open house received the positive feedback I expected. The reaction proved that the remarketing strategy made a huge difference. This house has been transformed from an absolute zoo of a family home into a zen-like oasis for urban professionals. So the house is ready, but we'll just have to see if it sells. I'm nervous because we haven't sold yet. It's down to the wire now. We have to sell it or we are going to have two mortgages in two weeks. Well, the open house is a few days ago, and the good news is Amy and Frank have received two offers. So we're just hoping and waiting anxiously to see if one of those offers becomes a sale. After a night of negotiation, Amy and Frank accepted the second offer and sold their home for $312,500 to a young professional couple. They fell in love with the house, and Amy and Frank fell in love with that. Thank you.